Have you ever wondered how a man with no claims to the throne became an emperor? This was the case for Servius Sulpicius Galba. Born in 3 BCE to a noble family, Galba was a child of privilege. His lineage was deeply rooted in the political and military history of Rome. His father, Gaius Sulpicius Galba, was a highly respected statesman and his mother, Mumia Achaica, was a woman of renowned beauty and intellect. Raised in the lap of luxury, Galba was instilled with a sense of duty and honor from an early age. His early life was a testament to his future greatness. The young Galba excelled in his studies, showing a keen interest in law and politics. He was groomed for public service and took to it like a fish to water, swiftly rising through the ranks of Rome's political machinery. His military career was equally impressive. Galba served with distinction in various campaigns, demonstrating a sharp strategic mind and a natural ability to lead. His courage in battle and his tactical acumen earned him the respect of his peers and superiors alike. But it was not just his prowess in battle and politics that set him apart. Galba was a man of exceptional character. His integrity was unassailable, his judgment sound. He was known for his strict adherence to Roman law and his unwavering commitment to justice. Despite his accomplishments, Galba was not born into the purple, nor was he directly in line for the throne. He was in many ways an unlikely choice for emperor. Yet, as we will see, fate had other plans for him. Through a combination of circumstances, personal abilities and sheer force of will, Galba found himself on the path to power. A path that would lead him to the highest office in the Roman Empire. A path that would see him ascend the throne as the Emperor of Rome. Galba was certainly not born an emperor, but circumstances and his own abilities set him on a path towards the throne. Galba's rise to power was not a straightforward journey, it was a path filled with political maneuverings and a stroke of luck. Born in 3 BCE, Servius Sulpicius Galba was a member of a distinguished Roman family. His early career was marked by a steady ascent through the ranks of Roman society, culminating in his appointment as the governor of Hispania Tarraconensis in 60 CE. This position, situated in modern-day Spain, gave him a base of power from which to make a play for the ultimate prize, the Roman Emperorship. As Galba ruled Hispania, a thousand miles away in Rome, Emperor Nero's regime was spiraling into chaos. Nero's extravagant lifestyle and erratic behavior had led to widespread dissatisfaction among the Roman populace and the military. The empire was ripe for a change, and Galba saw his opportunity. In the spring of 68 CE, Galba's moment arrived. His troops, disillusioned with Nero's reign, declared him emperor. This was a pivotal moment, a clear declaration of rebellion against Nero. But it wasn't just a military coup. Galba's claim to the throne was strengthened by the fact that he was a descendant of Jupiter, the king of the gods, according to Roman mythology. This divine lineage lent an aura of legitimacy to his claim, helping him win support from crucial sections of Roman society. With the declaration of his troops and the backing of the Senate, Galba marched on Rome. Nero, seeing the writing on the wall, fled the city and later took his own life, marking the end of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Galba, the unlikely emperor, had ascended to the throne, but the struggles of ruling were just beginning. Galba had risen to power, but as he would soon discover, maintaining that power would be a far greater challenge. Once on the throne, Galba's reign was marked by financial austerity and strict discipline. The Roman Empire had been in a state of financial disarray for some time, and Galba, with his practical and disciplined approach, was determined to right these wrongs. He tightened the imperial purse strings, reducing public spending and increasing taxes. An emperor who believed in fiscal responsibility, Galba sought to restore financial stability and prosperity to an empire rocked by years of mismanagement and extravagance. But his reign wasn't just about balancing the books. Galba was a stickler for discipline, enforcing strict rules and regulations across the empire. He believed in the power of the rule of law and was determined to instill a sense of order and structure that he felt was lacking in the Roman Empire. He held his officials to high standards, expecting them to adhere to the same level of discipline that he himself displayed. However, these measures were not universally popular. Galba's austerity measures hit the pockets of the Roman citizens hard. The increased taxes and reduced public spending led to widespread discontent among the populace. 
Moreover, his strict discipline was perceived as harsh and inflexible by many, leading to resentment among the ranks. One of Galba's most controversial decisions was his refusal to pay the Praetorian Guard, the elite soldiers who were responsible for the Emperor's personal protection. This decision was seen as a direct affront to the Guard and greatly contributed to his downfall. It was a risky move, one that Galba was to pay dearly for. Galba's reign, though brief, left a mark on the Roman Empire. His fiscal austerity and strict discipline were a stark contrast to the extravagance and laxity of his predecessors. While his policies were unpopular, they were necessary to restore order and stability to a crumbling empire. But the same measures that were meant to save the empire ended up alienating the very people he needed to rule. And so, despite his best intentions, Galba's reign was to lead to his downfall. Galba's reign, though brief, left a mark on the Roman Empire, a mark that was to lead to his downfall. Galba's downfall was as swift as his rise to power. A sense of unease began to permeate through the ranks of the Roman military. Galba, once their general, had imposed stringent policies and strict discipline that were far from the leniency they were accustomed to. The harshness of his rule was a bitter pill to swallow for many, creating a cauldron of discontent that was ready to boil over. At the heart of this tension was a man named Otho. A member of Galba's own court, Otho was a picture of ambition and resentment. He had seen firsthand the effects of Galba's severe rule and perhaps more personally felt the sting of Galba's decision to adopt Lucius Calpurnius Piso Licinianus as his successor, bypassing Otho. Otho's response was swift and decisive. He harnessed the simmering unrest among the troops, turning their discontent into a seething rebellion. Galba's strict policies had inadvertently created the perfect environment for Otho to stage his coup. And so, in the early days of 69 CE, Otho's rebellion came to a head. Galba, the man who had led Rome's armies, who had ascended to the pinnacle of Roman power, was assassinated in the heart of the city he ruled. His reign, which had begun with such promise, ended in a public square, his life taken by those he had sought to control. The twists and turns of Galba's rule, his rise and abrupt fall, are a stark testament to the volatile nature of power in ancient Rome. His story serves as a potent reminder that the throne of the Caesars was as dangerous as it was desirable. Galba's reign ended in bloodshed, a stark reminder of the perils of power. Galba's reign was brief, but his legacy was lasting. The echoes of this Roman emperor's life reverberate through history, even though he held the throne for a mere seven months. His death in January 69 CE marked the onset of a tumultuous period in Roman history, often referred to as the Year of the Four Emperors. Galba's death created a power vacuum that was filled by three more emperors within that year. This instability was a reflection of the turbulent times and the changing dynamics of power within the Roman Empire. Each of these emperors, much like Galba himself, ascended to the throne with promises of change and reform, but their reigns were short-lived as political rivalries and military discontent saw them toppled one after the other. Reflecting on Galba's life, one can see a man who rose through the ranks due to his military prowess and his ability to navigate the intricacies of Roman politics. His ascension to the throne was a testament to his ambition and his ability to seize opportunity when it presented itself. However, his reign was marked by financial instability and political discontent leading to his downfall. His downfall, however, was not solely due to his own actions, but also a result of the shifting sands of Roman politics and the growing unrest within the military ranks. Galba's decision to adopt Lucius Calpurnius Piso as his successor, bypassing the more popular Marcus Salvius Otho, was the final straw that led to his assassination. Galba's life serves as a poignant reminder of the fleeting nature of power, but beyond that, it also speaks to the lasting impact of our actions. His reign, albeit brief, left an indelible mark on the Roman Empire, setting the stage for a year of political turmoil and changing the course of history. His life and reign remind us that power is transient, but our actions and their consequences can echo through the ages. Galba's life serves as a reminder of the fleeting nature of power and the lasting impact of our actions.